Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the prophet zechariah tells us israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against jerusalem zechariah 12 2 and 3 behold i will make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against judah and jerusalem and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Israel hit 300 targets in Lebanon today as it carried out a massive strike against Hezbollah's stockpile of missiles. The IDF is warning civilians to evacuate areas where the terror group stores and fires its, its weapons. Over the weekend, Hezbollah rockets hit Israeli cities as far south as Haifa and Nazareth. Israel is warning Lebanese civilians to get away from homes and buildings where Hezbollah's DR-3 cruise missiles are located as it prepares a massive strike. We advise civilians from Lebanese villages located in and next to buildings and areas used by Hezbollah for military purpose, such as those used to store weapons, to immediately move out of harm's way for their own safety. IDF chief spokesman Daniel Hagari explained that the Russian-made cruise missiles are embedded in civilian homes and ready to launch. Here you can see how we identified the terrorists making an opening in the building that exposed the missile. In a precise strike, the IDF eliminated the terrorist and this missile launching infrastructure shortly before the launch. Israeli President Isaac Herzog railed against Hezbollah's 150 rocket attacks that struck deep into Israel, sending hundreds of thousands of Israelis racing into bomb shelters Sunday and forcing schools to be closed. Children, the elderly, the sick, residents who simply wish to live in peace and security. Israel intercepted many of the missiles in the sky, but some hit, including in Jesus' boyhood home of Nazareth. Israel is striking back hard, hitting about 400 launchers with the capability of launching thousands of rockets. The price that Hezbollah pays is increasing. Our attacks will increase. We have attacked hundreds of terrorist targets in Lebanon in recent days. Israel dealt a stunning blow to Hezbollah last week when it struck a building in Beirut where Hezbollah's top commanders were plotting an invasion of the north. All of these leaders were meeting together in order to launch the same horrific, horrendous attack that we had on October 7th by Hamas, by burning Israelis, butchering them, raping their women. In Gaza, where fighting continues, Hagari says there's no confirmation of reports that Hamas leader Yehye Sinwar was killed in an Israeli airstrike. Defense officials are unsure if he's been eliminated or gone deeper underground. Children, the elderly, the sick, Residents who simply wish to live in peace and security. First Thessalonians 5.3 While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. 
But the heart of this book is about the Aliyah from the United States of America. And we know that we're on the verge of this happening right now because God says he would bring them back from the north, south, east, and west. And Jeremiah 16 says, I will bring them from the land of the north and all the nations where they've been scattered. He says, first I will send the fishers, then I will send the hunters. And so we see now for the first time in the Western world, there's an incredible anti-Semitism rising after the Holocaust. We've seen not only in France, which now they say the more the war goes on, the more the Jews are coming back from France because of the anti-Semitism that's rising. But in the United States, we see all over the campuses, anti-Semitism rising like never happened before. And I know this is a sign that it's time for the Jewish people to come back also from the United States of America. And what I'm sharing about today is Aliyah, first fruits to fullness. I will bring them back, not leaving any behind. He brought all of them out of Egypt, but the book of Ezekiel was written after they came out of Egypt. So he's talking about bringing them all back in this generation. In the end times, they will all come back. All the ones that will be alive in the world will be back in Israel in the last days. So we're sending a message to every Jewish household in the United States uh, in, in the next couple months before a Feast of Trumpets. And a Feast of Trumpets, we're gonna blow trumpets through trumpet blasts, believing God for all the Jews to return back to Israel. How can people be praying for the Jewish people right now? Well, I think it's very important to proclaim the scriptures because God's word will not return void. And in our house of prayer in New York, they've been doing this for three and a half years, right in the middle of the largest Jewish community in the world. And even in Williamsburg, the largest Orthodox community, for the first time, many of them are saying they want to make Aliyah now. Prayer is a very, very important thing. Many Jews have made Aliyah from reading this book all over the world. Uh, we did five printings in Russian. We did. 12 printings in English. And so the word of the Lord, God's word will not return void. So be a living epistle and pray for the Jewish people, talk to them, encourage them. Is there an unprecedented crescendo of prayer for Israel right now? Yeah, I believe that there's more prayer happening for Israel now in the world probably than anywhere. Although I have to say that unfortunately, because not everyone's watching CBN, they're watching other, other, some crazy media, that many Christians in the world are be, being affected by the negative media sooner than by the word of God and hearing the truth. Isaiah 43, 1, 5, and 6. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Ever since the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD, the Jewish people have been scattered all over the earth. One of the many signs we are living in the last days is the Jewish people would return to the land of Israel. This prophecy was fulfilled in the late 1900s and is still being fulfilled today. Hosea 3.5 Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Witnesses testified to the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday about the alarming rise of anti-Semitism. Sixty percent of all religious-based hate crimes have been directed against the Jewish people. There's something going on here <clears throat> that needs to be addressed. Despite being only 3% of the population, Jewish Americans have remained at the top of the FBI's list of targeted groups, with anti-Semitic incidents rising more than 300% in the past year alone. Rabbi Abraham Cooper, an expert of online hate and terrorism, told CBN's Faith Nation he recently experienced this surge of hate himself. I was present outside of a synagogue in my neighborhood a few Sundays ago and was sprayed, a bear sprayed by quote-unquote protesters pro city of protesters who were trying to actually penetrate a Jewish synagogue on a Sunday morning. With Election Day approaching, lawmakers fear political violence and attacks on minority communities could escalate. Turning to the U.S. now, as classes are back underway following summer break on university campuses, many Jewish students don't feel safe, and rightfully so, according to a new report from the Anti-Defamation League. Anti-Israel incidents, including assault, vandalism, harassment, or protests, they have increased by 477% in the last school year. 
with more than 2,000 incidents on U.S. campuses. This troubling surge in anti-Israel attacks, which usually coincides with anti-Semitic attacks, it impacted more than 360 campuses across 46 states clearly a widespread problem facing the entire country. A new report from the Anti-Defamation League reveals that Israelis are worried about traveling abroad. A new survey by the Anti-Defamation League shows most Israelis still feel unsafe traveling abroad as Israelis. According to the survey, first reported by the Jerusalem Post, 80% of Israelis believe they may face unfair treatment or even be targeted simply for being Israeli when traveling. The survey, which polled over 500 Israelis, also found that nearly one-third, 31 percent, have personally experienced discrimination or know someone who has because they are Israeli. Additionally, 81 percent of Israelis expressed general concern about the rising wave of anti-Semitism worldwide. The survey follows a series of previous reports on the rise of anti-Semitism. In July, the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights reported a 400% spike in anti-Semitic incidents since the Gaza war began in October 2023. And a separate survey by the American Jewish Committee in February revealed that 22% more American Jews feel less secure in the U.S. compared to the previous year. Was hatred of the Jews foretold in scripture? Hatred of the Jews is so common that a word has been coined to describe it. It is called anti-Semitism, a term recognized worldwide. But was hatred of the Jews actually foretold in the Bible? Yes. According to the prophet Jeremiah, God said, And I will pursue them with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence. And I will deliver them to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Deuteronomy 28.37 and you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations where the Lord will drive you. Astonishment is the Hebrew word shema, which means ruin, by implication, consternation. Consternation means amazement or dismay that hinders or throws into confusion. Why did the Jewish people become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations? Jeremiah 29:19. Because they have not heeded my words, says the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them. Neither would you heed, says the Lord. Because the Jews' ancestors disregarded God and refused to obey Him, they faced a great tribulation of hostility and persecution lasting many centuries. Is there a lesson in this for the rest of us? Yes. The Apostle Paul wrote concerning the severity of God in punishing His chosen people. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. Romans 11.22 The Christian church is doing the same thing that God warned the Jews about in Jeremiah 29.19 Because they have not heeded my words, says the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them. Neither would you heed, says the Lord. Why anti-Semitism now? God is using anti-Semitism to bring the Jews back to Israel fulfilling his prophetic word. Ezekiel 37.21-22 then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. Hosea 3.5 Afterward the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They shall fear the Lord and His goodness in the latter days. Did Christians replace Jews as God's chosen people? No. God did not replace the Jews with Christians as His chosen people. This lie is called replacement theology. Replacement theology is the teaching that the Christian church has replaced national Israel regarding the plan, purpose, and promises of God. Genesis 13, 14-17 And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Romans 11.29 For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Why this great deception within the church? It's a supernatural phenomenon. Ephesians 6.12 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them. He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. Replacement theology is an abomination. It is unbiblical and it has resulted in virulent anti-Semitism that has in turn resulted in the deaths of millions of Jews. If you are a Christian and replacement theology is true and God is done with the Jew, what makes you think he isn't through with me and you? When God makes a promise, he cannot lie. So we know the promises he made to the Jews and to the Christian church will be fulfilled. Titus 1, 1 and 2. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Hebrews 6, 17 through 18. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. There is no reason for the church to be covetous of the promises that God has made to the Jewish people. He has also made some glorious promises to the church, one of which is the rapture. Additionally, we have been promised that we will reign with him over all the nations of the world during his millennial kingdom. And we have been promised that we will live with him eternally on a new earth, in a new Jerusalem, in new glorified bodies. It is no wonder that Paul wrote, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has the mind of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. The coming seven-year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation, in which the Jewish people will look on me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him, as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. They will receive Yeshua as their Messiah. They will cry out, Baruch, Abba, Basham, Edne. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a glorious day that will be. What glory it will bring to the name of God. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord is my God. It makes no sense outside a hatred of the Jewish people. And we have to stand against this. It's anti-Semitism of the worst kind, where we want to, the, the people are saying, we want to wipe Israel off the map from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Understand what that means. It means killing every single Jew in Israel, making sure Israel never exists, wiping it off the map. As Christians, let's stand for truth, let's stand for what the Bible says, and let's protect Israel. Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.